to keep you a copy of series two rather than end up with a stack of tapes like this, we've come up with this. The Fingertips Video Storer. No, we haven't found a way of cramming loads of VHSs into a small box because you don't have to. No, we've worked out that you can record the whole of Series 2 on two three-hour VHS tapes that fit perfectly into your ready-made video slots just there. An awesome archive of well over 100 ideas. And it may look very high-tech, but in fact you need hardly any techno know-how to make it. And here's how you do it. First, get two washing powder boxes and stick them together like we've done here. And you also need a large margarine tub. Now, the lid will work as your TV screen and the pot works as the lump at the back. Then get two video covers, stick those back to back and then make a hole large enough for them to fit inside just there. Then the lid to a drinks bottle works as your handle. And already, it is looking good, isn't it? It's looking very nice. And now, for the aerial on top, what you want to do is get a washing up bottle and cut off the top of it and then get two bendy straws and put a polystyrene ball on the top of each one. Then thread that through the top of your washing up bottle and flatten over on the other side. Get a bit of sticky tape and that should just hold it nicely in place. There we go. Next, simply paint your TV and video authentic colours. And when it's finished and dried, add pen details like your TV channels. And we've gone one step further and made a stand for ours. Look at that. And once you've painted your aerial, sit that on top there. And your videos will slot perfectly into here. Brilliant. Can you believe how realistic it looks? Yeah, put it in your room and show all of your mates. So, set yourself up and make your very own fingertips video storer. And don't miss out on any fantastic fingertip ideas. That's just what I would have said, Stephen. Got a minute? Because this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something in under a minute using odds and ends from around your house. Today, it is my turn to make. And it's my turn to tie. And this is all it takes, look, a bit of tissue paper. And this, trust me, you're going to love. This is my favourite one. It is very cool. Now, we're not going to tell you what it is just yet, but see if you can guess along the way. Stephen, I see you're flexing there, yes. so you must be ready. I'm ready. What's that? Okay, Three, ready. two, one, go! Right, first thing I need to do second, is just make a cross on the paper like this. Come on, Stephen. There's no on. way you're going to guess what this is. I'll make a cross. So. You're quite an expert at this, aren't you? I am. I'm very it's good at this. become your problem. new hobby. Okay, now turn the paper over and I make like a tray shape. You're coming up for 15 seconds. That's 15 seconds. A quarter of your time. No te problemo. And I uh, just put up this one. So making like a tray. There we go. How am I doing for time? That's now on to 25 seconds, Stephen. Okay, There's now no turning back. Keep just going. pinch Come the on. corners. Pinch the corners. You'd never guess what this is. 30 seconds, half time. Okay. And do you know what I'm going to say now? Set with me at home. Stop the clock! On 36 seconds, exactly. <laughs> well, if you're thinking what I thought when I first saw this, and that it's an incredibly weak tray, incapable of carrying anything, then you're wrong. But if you thought it was an aerodynamically efficient precision aeronautical instrument, you'd be right. Because what Stephen has here is a flying machine right at his fingertips. Captain Mulhern chocks away. Here we go. <gasps> Woo! Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. I want to have a go now, so I'll tell you what, let's give you a recap. First of all, oh, hello. First of all, once you've um, folded across into the middle of your paper, you're right there, like this, you need to fold up the edges <laughs> like a border. So do the two long sides first. And that's my leg, Stephen. Uh, then you want to do the two shorter sides at the top and the bottom. Once you've got to this stage, you need to pinch all the corners together so you end up with your little tray. Then, one minute. Here goes. Yeah! Oh, look at that. Yes. Woo. These flying machines only take a minute to make, so give it a spin and try and beat the clock. Oh. <laughs> this is Food Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you something that's fun to make and great to taste. And today we're monkeying around in the kitchen to make a delicious dessert. We know you're gonna go ape over. It's a orangutan, and the best thing about this cheeky monkey is there's no cooking whatsoever. You're going to need to get your fingertips on some meringue nests, two ripe bananas, some ice cream, another ripe banana, some chocolate buttons, and some grapes. And you're also going to need a bowl that's safe to place in your freezer, and you need to line it with cling film. 
Then take four of your meringue nests and save these for the eyes and the ears. There you go, Stephen. And put the rest into a large bowl. So another four should be enough and then crush them all up. Then add two of your bananas chopped up. Put them in there with the mixture. And some ice cream, my favourite. So let's spoon some ice cream into there as well. There we go. And then give this whole mixture a good stir. Oh, look at that. It's all sticking <laughs> together. Very <laughs> yummy. Then you want to just spoon this, once you've stirred it nicely, into your bowl, which is lined with cling film. So let's plop that into there. It can get a bit messy now. You just want to eat it, don't you? I know. <laughs> so we're to try and aim for the bowl and get as much in as you can. There we go. And once it's all in there, pop it in the freezer for a couple of hours. And before you take it out of the freezer, you need to make a base for your face. So get the meringue nest that you put to the side, and these will do for the eyes, and these will do for the ears. Lovely. Then you want to get the ice cream and just peel away the cling film. That does look so yummy, doesn't it, in there? <laughs> mm -mm. And just lift it up, look at that, just pops out, and then position it over the meringue nest. So let's place it just about there. And when you're happy with the positioning, you can actually peel away the cling film. So let's peel it away. Look at hey, that. Hey, <laughs> and now you can add your pupils on your eyes, which are your grapes and some chucky butter nostrils. Yummy! And check this out for the final added touch. How about a half a slice of banana for the mouth? <laughs> and then half a banana for the eyebrows. And there he is! You're done! A meringue tang will open up any lunchtime or make the perfect party piece. Check these out. If you don't want to make banana ice cream, how about adding raspberries to your meringue? What about the chocolate cheeky chimp? Instead of using meringues, use biscuits. So go bananas and monkey around in the kitchen with meringues, ice cream and loads of yummy fruit. It's fun food, the fingertips way. Ever wondered where you get hold of a fantastic, funky fingertips t shirt? Well, sadly, at the moment, you cannot buy them in the shops. But you can make one because this is Little Fingertips, the part of the program where we show you how to make something, recycling stuff you'd probably just find lying around your house. And today, we're revamping a plain old t shirt. And it couldn't be easier. All you have to do is go to the Fingertips website and print off one of the Fingertips hands. Now, we'll give you the address at the end of today's show. Now, you want to print off the hand and the logo onto special printer paper that you can get in most craft shops. Now, you mostly already noticed that the writing and the hand is back to front, but by the time you iron it onto your T-shirt, it becomes the right way round. How cool is that? Now, if you haven't got a computer at home or a colour printer, don't worry, because you can still make a funky T-shirt, which is slightly more personalised. Using fabric paints. Now, they come in loads of different colours and textures. You can get fluorescent paints, also glitter paint and pearly colours in squirty tubes. Now, get your plain old T-shirt and flatten it out and put a piece of card in between the two layers so the paint won't seep through to the back. Then, in a tray, you want to put some fabric paint. We've gone for a bright fingertips pink. Now, it's time for the messy bit. In goes my hand. Oh, it feels lovely. And then, make sure you've got lots of paint on there. You just want to squish it straight onto your T-shirt. Here goes. Right in the centre. There we go. Give it a good press down. And there you have one lovely handprint. And also from bendy straws and half a sweet tube covered in more foil. Thread the straws through the tube and stick one either side of your bin. To make the overflow, add food colouring to some PVA glue and pour it onto a sheet of cling film. Add your rubbish and wait for it to dry. Now just pop in a bin bag and you're ready to store your makeover rubbish. So from old trainers to old tights, stash your trash in a fingertips load of rubbish bin. What are we going to do with these? They're my pants, thank you. Because this is the part of the program where we show you how to make something in under a minute using bits and pieces you can find around your home. Today it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to tie. And this is all it takes, just that I tell you nothing more. It's not a lot of stuff. Now, we're not going to tell you what it is. You're going to have to try and guess as Fern's making. But I will give you a clue. If you do it right, Fern, I'll give you a round of applause. Ah, I see. OK. Three, two, one, go! Special technique to this. Get to your napkin and 
You just want to get the corners and twist. Five seconds have gone. Five um, seconds. Okay, Stephen, don't panic me and stop tapping me, please. Okay, and ten seconds have gone. Stop tapping me. Is that putting you off? Slightly. And fourth, twist. There we go. Now, Fifteen seconds have gone. Do that again. <laughs> and then oh. you just need to add the eyes and oh. the mouth. Twenty-five Stephen. seconds. Stop. Oh, that's very good, but do you know what it is? Well, let's tell you, it is a lime dancing crab! Can have a round of applause now, oh, yes, yeah. But how do you make it dance? Using a lime. Here goes. Lime, crab on top, and you have one lime dancing crab! <laughs> it does look Ooh. great, doesn't it? And they're so simple. Now, we've made a few more of these. Check these ones out. Uh, now, the, anything round or heavy will make them dance, but the slight pointiness of a lemon or a lime just gives them a crazy movement. So, if you like our crabs, check out our website where we have a whole load of designs that you can print off. So, let's see if our limes can dance in time. Here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, hey, yes! Look at that! <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. That's fantastic, isn't it? So there we go, well our lines can sort of dance in time and you can definitely make them in time. So why don't you give it a go? And see if you can beat the clock. What do you think of my new handbag? Look at it, isn't it gorgeous? Very tasty. It's funny you should say that. Look at my wristband and my belt. Very nice. Now, what would you say if I told you it was good enough to eat? I don't think I'd believe this. So I think you should prove it, go on, fan. Not a problem. Mmm. Delicious. You see, this isn't just any old leather. No, no, no. This is fingertips edible leather. Now, it looks like leather. It does, doesn't it? It looks real. You can also wear it as leather, but the difference is, with this, you can eat it too. And it really is delicious. It tastes just like apples. And that's because it is apples. It's apple leather. Well, this is Food Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you something that's fun to make and great to taste, and this really is. Hey, I'm glad you said that, because I've got a little job for you. Just come over this side, right? All I need you to do is just peel these, core these and chop them, all right? Now, while Fern's doing that, I'll tell you what, you need to get your fingertips on. Well, first of all, you need ten cooking apples. You also need some apple juice, some cinnamon and some honey. Oh, done it. That's amazing. Hang on, how did you do that so quickly? Trade secret. Now, once you've peeled and cored your apples, you need to stew them with the apple juice. So pour it all in there. A couple of cupfuls should do it, and then stew them until they're soft. Then before you do the next bit, you want your apples to cool down. And when they are really cool, you just want to spoon your mixture into a colander over a bowl and just drain away some of that excess juice. And when they are strained off, you want to get your apples as smooth as possible. And the easiest way to do that is use a liquidizer. Now, you may want to get a bit of help with it. And as soon as the apples are in, then give them a spin. Then just taste it to test it out. Mm. I think a bit of honey is needed there, so add a bit of honey to make it sweeter. And how about a pinch of cinnamon to give it a nice flavour? There we go. Then you just want to stir the whole thing up. You then want to spread it out onto a baking tray as evenly as possible. And when you're happy with it, you want to leave it to dry. Now, this can take a while, but you can speed it up by popping it into your oven overnight at its lowest possible heat. And leave your oven door open just a little bit so some of the moisture can escape. And then once you've done that, you need to leave it for another couple of days in a warm place so it can dry out some more. And when it has dried, fingers crossed, you should just be able to peel it off the baking tray. Here it goes. Here we go. Look at that. <laughs> just comes off. Now, if your one's a bit sticky or tacky, just rub a bit of corn flour on it and it will be fine. Do you know, it really does feel like real leather. Now all you have to do is decide what you're going to make. If you want to make a wristband like my one here, all you need to do is get some scissors and start slipping. It's that easy. And it cuts really beautifully. Look at that. You can cut out any shapes at all you want to make different patterns and designs. And you can even use a real hole punch to make holes. You can thread it up and tie it together using licorice lace. And the more holes you make, the more different designs you can do. Check my one out. What do you think? It's all right, isn't it? And how about this? Make bigger holes and you can actually weave licorice all the way through or even thread loads of little squares together like that one there. 
And if you'd like to make a bout like your mind, you can stick sweets on using icing and plat licorice together to make the whole belt a lot stronger. They're fun to make and incredibly great to taste. Oh, yes, she beats one man and she beats a second. She's now clean through to the goal. She aims, she lifts her eye, drops her shoulder, she shoots. She oh. scores! Yes! <laughs> yes, forget the terraces and your astroturf. The coolest place is the beach to show off your silky soccer skills. All right. So, here on Fingertips, we've come up with an all year round pitch that will keep you playing whatever the weather. Fingertips Beach Football. Yep, it has the skill and excitement of table football with the added fun of palm tree goalposts and a sandy pitch. Yep, it looks fantastic, it's fun to make, and it's starting out like this. Just a few cardboard rolls, garden canes, and a couple of fruit punnets. And a cardboard box. And you're halfway to making beach football. Now, the bigger the box, the bigger the fun. And the first thing you want to do is take your two fruit punnets. These are going to be your goals. And put them either end of your box. And just mark where they sit there and there. And you want to actually cut down these lines. And with the flaps, these will be the base for your goals to be stuck on. Your players are half a kitchen roll. You need six players, that's three for each team. So once you've cut your three kitchen rolls in half, get a pencil and some modelling clay. And just above the halfway point, you want to make a hole. So just push right the way through. And this is where your stick's going to go, so you can control your players when you're playing beach football. Your sticks also need to go through the side of your box. So you need to make four holes either side with a sharp pencil and use one of your players to line up your holes because you want to make sure that there's space at the bottom for your players to spin round. So put the garden cane through one side of the box, through your player and out the other side. And on one end, you want to put an elastic band and this will act as a buffer to stop the garden cane coming back through your box like that. And on the other end, you want to make a hole in a cork and put the cork on this end and this will act as your handle. And then just alternate them throughout the box. So you've got a cork, elastic band, cork, elastic band. Now, once you've done all the sticks, you'll have six players ready to play. Now, you could play beach football unpainted, like this. Or... Like this, a painted and decorated version. Now, we've gone for a yellow colour pitch. We've even, look, added sand and painted on shells to give it a beach feel. And for our palm tree goalposts, we've painted some sweet tubes and then put some paper leaves on top. And the best thing about them is you haven't got to glue them in place. Look, <laughs> you pop them on top and then just put the lid on. How cool is that? It's good, isn't it? And, of course, paint your players too. Give each team a different colour strip. And we've painted up our ping-pong football set just like a beach ball, so let's chuck it in and let the games commence. Now, the idea is to score five goals before your opponent does, so let's give it a try, Stevie, come on. And, of course, oh, hello! Oh, 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 the faster you, you spin your players, the harder you hit the ball. So go on, show off your soccer skills on a sun-drenched beach with a fingertips beach football. And even if it's raining cats and dogs outside, it'll be raining goals inside. And it's a goal! Next time on Fingertips, we'll show you how to recycle your old socks into the fantastic Sockless Monster. In Green Fingertips, find out how you can turn a glass of water into these beautiful ice light bowls. And in Fun Fingertips, we get totally spooked with a game of ghostly golf. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from the programme, then check out our website. The address is on the screen now. And we'll see you very soon for some more... Fingertips. Fingertips! See ya! Bye!